For this month's update, I thought I would take you to one of the largest hot springs in the world, and certainly probably the most colorful. We are at Grand Prismatic Spring in Midway Geyser Basin. Now, Grand Prismatic is famous for the rainbow of colors that occupy the edges. Very blue in the center because it's very hot, but as you get to the rims, that allows a little bit of a temperature cool down and different types of bacteria grow. And so the different colors indicate different temperatures from different bacteria. Now, Grand Prismatic was first described probably by trappers in 1839 that noticed the really spectacular colors. And in fact, they said, it weren't sure what the colors were from, and it was going to have to be some curious scientist that came along and investigated. And of course, there have been a lot of curious scientists that have been here. One of those curious scientists was park geologist Rick Hutchinson. He actually had a specialized boat designed that was very, very stable. It would float even if the bottom came out of it. And he went out with other park staff onto the surface of this boiling lake to collect water samples and try to measure the depth. The, little, the boat was called the Little Dipper. He went out a few times and they got a depth of possibly more than a hundred feet. Unclear if that's true, it might be that the, the line got a little bit tangled, but certainly a, a very big feat of daring by the geologist there, but he got some samples and measurements that wouldn't have otherwise been possible. The whole thing is 300 feet across. It's about the size of American football field. So spectacular spring here in Midway Geyser Basin, Grand Prismatic, one of the most spectacular in the world. All right, now let's talk about what happened in terms of geyser activity, deformation, and seismicity over the last month here in Yellowstone. It was another quiet month in terms of seismicity in the Yellowstone region. The University of Utah seismograph stations located 60 earthquakes during the month of June. They were spread all throughout the region, and the largest was a magnitude 2.7 that was just to the north-northeast of West Yellowstone, Montana, near Hebgen Lake. And this is sort of the area where we see the most seismicity traditionally in the region. There were no earthquake swarms during the month, so seismicity at Yellowstone remains at background levels. Turning now to ground deformation, this is vertical deformation at Hayden Valley. This is on the east side of the caldera on the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. This particular plot spans the past two years. Each one of these blue dots is one day of data, and this overall downward trend indicates subsidence of the Sour Creek Dome and the caldera. That has been going on since 2015 or 2016. It's interrupted in the summer months by a pause or a slight amount of uplift, and that's caused by changing groundwater conditions, mostly due to snowmelt that's recharging the groundwater. So we're not seeing really any changes in ground deformation conditions, and the seasonal uplift that we see every summer looks like it has started in the caldera as of early June. And now to hydrothermal activity. This is the temperature measured in the outflow channel of Steamboat Geyser. The daily variations we see here are just temperature variations caused by day versus night. And then that record starts to get a bit fuzzy as you get in towards the middle of the month, and that's caused by minor eruptions of the geyser. So the more minor activity we see, the more likely we're going to be leading into a major. So it's quite possible that during the month of July, we will have another major eruption of steamboat. So far in 2025, it has had two major eruptions. In other hydrothermal news, many of you may have heard the story of the bison that unfortunately died at Grand Prismatic Spring. Now, the bison apparently got too close to the edge and was scalded to death. Very unfortunate, but this is actually not that uncommon in Yellowstone. In many hot springs, you can actually see bones of animals that probably got too close to the edge, and the ledges of some of the hot springs are very, very fragile and thin and can collapse under an animal's weight pretty easily. In other hydrothermal news, Black Diamond Pool in Biscuit Basin had another small eruption. Now, this is the pool that exploded in July of 2024. In mid-May, YVO installed a webcam to observe activity of the pool following reports of lots of small eruptions there. Captured an eruption on May 31st, and another eruption occurred on June 12th. Now, this eruption occurred very early in the morning, 625 in the morning, and unfortunately, the conditions were rather foggy, as you can see, but still there, you can, in the background, you can see the water splashing up and then, of course, water lapping on the margins of the pool. So Black Diamond remains somewhat active with small eruptions occurring every few weeks or so. Well, that does it for this month's YVO update. Now, remember, if you have any questions, you can email us at yvowebteam, all one word, at usgs.gov. We will see you next month from another spot in Yellowstone. Until then, stay safe and stay healthy. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.